coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Gulfstream introduces G300. Ticket sales now open for Affordable Flying Expo. Starship's 11th test flight in early October. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Gulfstream introduces G300. Gulfstream has announced the all-new super mid-size Gulfstream G300, which will replace the Gulfstream G280 and feature Gulfstream panoramic oval windows, as well as an all-new Harmony flight deck. Gulfstream announced the G300 at its exclusive Discover the Difference customer event in Savannah. The G300 combines transatlantic range with short field capabilities, covering 3,600 nautical miles at Mach 0.8 or 3,000 nautical miles at Mach 0.84. The aircraft features a maximum cruise altitude of 45,000 feet and the lowest cabin altitude in its class at 4,800 feet when flying at 41,000 feet. The G300 accommodates up to 10 passengers. The G300 Harmony flight deck includes six touchscreens paired with phase of flight intelligence. A synthetic vision primary flight display depicts runways and terrain in 3D imagery to boost pilot situational awareness and Gulfstream's predictive landing performance system displays the runway stopping point in real time. Gulfstream has already accomplished nearly 22,000 hours of testing at its state-of-the-art lab facilities, which includes an integration test facility with Ironbird capability. The facility completed its first flight last month. It has also completed nearly 2,000 ground test hours on the first aircraft, as well as starting manufacturing two additional test craft. After the break, Indian Air Force waves off final MiG-21 fighters. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com The legendary BD4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more detail. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Indian Air Force waves off final MiG-21 fighters. The Indian Air Force has finally said goodbye to its MiG-21s, which entered service more than 60 years ago, and have most recently been seen as flying coffins rather than fighters. The decommissioning ceremony formally retired the last 36 jets operated by MiG-21 Squadrons 23, the Panthers, and 3, the Cobras. The retirement marks the official end of India's long and complicated relationship with the Soviet-era jet. At its peak, the IAF operated 872 MiGs of various models, making it the largest fleet of its kind in the world. United cleared to bring Starlink to its mainline fleet. United Airlines has been given the official FAA nod to put Starlink technology on its mainline fleet, and it isn't wasting time. The equipment has already been installed on the carrier's first 737-800, with plans to proceed with 50 regional jet installations per month and begin customer flights on October 15th. The carrier has already been busy on the regional side, fitting Starlink antennas on more than half of its Embraer 175s and other regional jets since May. CAF update on P-47N Thunderbolt restoration. The CAF's Airbase Georgia acquired a P-47N Thunderbolt built by Republic Aviation, and they knew that to restore it back to airworthiness, they had a long road ahead. But support from volunteers and the general public has been fueling progress on one of the most ambitious restoration projects in its history. When the aircraft was first acquired in 2022, volunteers immediately began cataloging thousands of parts, repairing wing damage, and fabricating fittings in the machine shop. Feds restore Boeing Certification Authority 
The FAA has decided that it is ready to put its trust back in Boeing, restoring the plane maker's authority to determine aircraft airworthiness years after fatal crashes and production quality concerns led the agency to block the practice. From now on, the duo will alternate weeks issuing certificates for certain 737 MAX and 787 Jets. Boeing's authority to self-certify was revoked for the 737 MAX in 2019 after two concerning accidents. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Ticket sales now open for Affordable Flying Expo. With a little over a month to go, it's time to get serious. Thanks to the folks at Sun & Fun, we have a highly professional online ticketing apparatus at our disposal for next month's Affordable Flying Expo. And we have other good news. Use the code AFE2025 and you can get $5 off the adult ticket price of $15 or even more for a three-day pass. After an insane amount of work on the part of the ANN crew and more than a little hand-holding by the event experts at Sun & Fun, the expo is shaping up. We have an amazing series of seminars and forums in the works, as well as a live Friday night town hall in which we'll be dissecting Mosaic in as great a detail as we can muster. Attendees also receive free admission to the Florida Air Museum during the expo. We're planning on lots of demo flying, some intriguing flight displays of the latest affordable flyers, food trucks to take care of all your munchies, and best of all, we've already landed some of the sport aviation industry's most prominent companies. On deck are Vans, Cub Crafters, Gratia Aero and the BD-4C, Dynan Avionics, Delta Hawk, Extra Aircraft, Phil Lockwood and his RV-916, Glime, King Schools, Hummel Aircraft, and so much more. Get your tickets now and tell your friends to do the same. All profits go to the Sun & Fun ACE program. Check out affordableflying.net slash attend and click the Purchase Tickets icon. We'll see you there November 6th, 7th, and 8th. After these messages, Starship's 11th test flight in early October. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel powered liquid cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at deltahawk.com. Welcome back. Starship's 11th test flight in early October. SpaceX has filed a preliminary local notice to Mariners indicating that Starship's 11th test flight could launch no earlier than October 13th. As always, dates and times in preliminary notices are subject to change based on regulatory approval, readiness, and weather. The LNM was filed following a confirmation by SpaceX on social media that it had successfully completed a full-duration static fire test with Starship on September 22nd. If SpaceX follows its typical timeline, a Starship launch would be the next step for the vehicle. SpaceX is expected to utilize the current Starship hardware for the 11th flight and is planning to introduce its next-gen Starship V3 prototype later this year. Elon Musk has said previously that Starship V3 will initiate a year of, quote, heavy flight activity in 2026. It will enable in-orbit refueling and perhaps the first ever attempt at catching a returning upper stage. Musk has also suggested that once Starship is fully operational, it could be responsible for launching 95% or more of the Earth's total payload to orbit starting in 2026. SpaceX's long-term goals of building a fully reusable rocket system will lower the cost of space access as well as support human exploration of the Moon and Mars. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.